I'll turn on the mic so that people can actually hear me. <laughs> That's better. So as I was saying, uh, my name is Garen and uh, we have the Awaken the World page and awakentheworld.ca as well as a YouTube channel. Um, this particular broadcast is going to our personal page and it, it's kind of just an impromptu uh, sit down and little discussion over some things that have come up over the last day again. Now, uh, I want to talk about thoughts and perceptions a little bit because th this is a, um, a, a really big issue, actually. And uh, before we do that, uh, I'm just going to take the uh, advantage here to in, in, invite anyone who wants to come. Uh, and, uh, and, and we'll, we'll just kind of continue from there. So thoughts in our mind, uh, in, in the ego, we have this process and, and this process we would call thinking. And we believe it's always us that's doing the thinking. And, you know, as I've spoken about before, and as you've heard from the likes of Eckhart Tolle and, and many other masters, uh, we are not our thinking mind. Now, again, I must point out that that ego consciousness, that filter, that one-of-a-kind way of looking at life and the universe uh, is, is not only unique and special, it's valuable. It is the memory bank uh, from which all your experiences travel back across the veil, back out of the illusion. Okay? Uh, but it is dysfunctional in its beliefs, in its separation and aloneness, and its thoughts and perceptions in how it views the world. And the biggest thing that we do is, of course, we buy those thoughts as 100% truth. You know, and, and again, as I've said before, sooner or later, you're going to see a baseball bat come through the frame as my wife takes a swing at me, because I'm going to use her again as an example. Uh, it's the... A uh, funeral today of her father-in-law, and uh, there's simply no way that she can go. Uh, it, it not only has her conservative Christian family spent the last three years uh, totally uncommunicative, not, not responding to any of her attempts, and, and just re really acting par for the course for ego, okay, uh, it, it's just it's too uncomfortable. And yesterday, that was really, really getting to her. And her thoughts, what she was telling herself, what the ego was telling itself about everything, was creating uh, really nasty feelings inside of her. She was really sad. I could tell her energy was depressed. It was obvious. It was like, you know, it was a dark cloud floating over her as she walked in the room. Um, you know... <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to get my wife to actually come on the video here when she's, uh, you know, willing to get in front of the camera and, and maybe uh, tell you what a joy <laughs> it is living with someone who reads you like a book that you're totally transparent to. <laughs> there's, there's days, I'm sure, where it feels like the worst classroom she's ever been in, but... Uh, you know, I, I, I honestly do it out of love. And I, I do these out of love for all of you. I, all of our suffering, all of it, stems from our thoughts and perceptions. Now, I, I know you're going to say, wait, 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 wait. What about when I cut myself? It hurts. Well, it, that too is a thought and a perception. The same signal, the, the same electrical current that tells you that you're feeling pleasure is the same electrical uh, signal, the same current that tells you you're feeling pain. It, that, that signal doesn't tell you anything at all, actually. You interpret it. Now, there's been times in my life where I, I've been so focused on what I've been doing that I, I have actually cut myself quite badly. And, and actually, the one time, there was a woman screaming because of the amount of blood that was flowing out of my head. And, and I wasn't even aware that I had been cut. 
Now, in those moments, you have to ask yourself, clearly, the signal still went to my egoic conscious self, that false sense of self. But that signal wasn't processed. My, my being was so focused on what it was doing that my, my ego totally ignored the signal's existence. And in that, my perception was that I had not been cut. And I continued to live that perception until a, you know, a, a well-meaning woman who couldn't stand the sight of blood <laughs> started screaming. <laughs> and then I realized, oh, I had been cut. But if, if you would ask me, well, when did I get cut? Or how did it feel when it happened? I, I couldn't tell you. Th that is a, a, a clear indication of how our thoughts and perceptions work. We literally think reality along for ourselves. We do that at a personal level, and we do that at a family level. We do that at a communal level of all sorts, and we do that at the larger level right through into our world. This world is a product of all the thoughts. Now, thoughts lead to words, and, and, and words are simply thoughts spoken out into uh, a place where there's a, a medium where the vibrations can travel. Uh, when we talk about it literally, okay. Now, and those words, of course, th those words are a meaningless, guttural mix of sounds, unless interpreted. And those interpretations will vary from mind to mind, from ego to ego, depending on their experience with those words. Th this is the, the, the grand maya that our uh, egoic minds create. We are the ones creating the illusion. We didn't walk into an illusion. We walked in with an agreement that for a short period of time, we were going to forget what we were so that we could really enjoy the trip. But in that forgetting, and over the last couple thousand years, the ego has grown stronger and stronger and stronger. And with the birth of our, our technology, with which, and I will uh, say this so we're clear about this, technology is not inherently good nor bad. It simply is. It is always in our choices, in our perceptions of what we should be doing with that technology that we run into trouble. So thoughts and perceptions. What we perceive determines our reality. Now, you know, there's some people who are going to say, well, okay, if I'm looking at a tree and um, I convince myself that that tree is a flying purple elephant, no one else is going to see that flying purple elephant. And, and I would say, well, back up a minute. What exactly is a tree? It, tree is a very convenient label we, we put on a, a conscious being that spends its life giving back for us. Tree does nothing to describe the, the, the wondrousness nor the variety of that sort of conscious being. And, and, and this is our, my, my puppy saying hello, and, and, and this is our, our, our dance that, that, that we, we get into with life, okay? Once you can understand that your thoughts are determining your reality, you can very easily begin to make decisions to change your thinking. Now, I, I'm not talking about some life coach, psychologist, mumbo-jumbo. I, I, quite frankly, I don't believe in any of that. A any of the things we do that involve letting the, the ego uh, build itself up even more by continually telling its miserable story over and over and over again, I, I don't see that fixing anybody. All I see that doing is... is making for huge counseling bills. <laughs> my, my technique is, is much simpler. And sure, if you find it valuable, send me a check. That'd be a great idea. <laughs> and, and, and my technique is this. Nothing that you will ever think about who you are is the truth. 
Now I know that that sounds hard to accept. You know, you could sit there and you could say, well, you know, I, I graduated university. I'm a doctor. I have a doctorate. Well, that you, you are not a doctor. That's a role you took on. It's a role that the ego became trained for. And you will identify with that role to some level. And the more you identify with the role, the more you think that that's what you are and the more your thoughts and perceptions are geared to that. But you're living now in a false reality within the illusion. There's seven and a half billion of them going on on the planet right now. And none of them are wrong per se. But at the same time, none of them are actually truth. The reality of what's going on is far different than what our thoughts and perceptions are. Perception, thoughts, are choice. Consciously or unconsciously, we make these choices all the time. And, and I have to tell you that it's not easy sometimes. You know, d despite the level of awareness I maintain, and, and if you get to know me better over time, you will find that uh, I, I maintain about a 80% blessed silence in the core of my being during a day. I, I don't follow whim to ego. And in that, you understand that when you take your thoughts and perceptions off of things, when, when, when you stop judging and just allow life to live itself through you, everything becomes smoother. Things begin to fall in line easier, more quickly than you would imagine. And, and at some point you will look back and you, you will say to yourself, well, what happened? D did I get in good with the big guy upstairs all of a sudden? Did I get in line with my higher self? And, and the, the real simple answer is none of those things. The only thing you did is choose to change how you perceive your existence. Choose to change how you think about yourself, how you think about those around you. Now, Thinking has a place, and thinking can be very valuable. But unguided, misdirected thinking, allowing the ego to just run rampant. You, you see, the ego is, is really a computer. It is not capable of dealing with anything new. It has to make a comparison in order to understand. And, and that understanding is, is so surface level, really. Actually kind of floating above the surface still. <laughs> the, this, the, the ego c cannot grasp with thinking the true experience of existence. That can only come from grace. That can only come when we've created enough silent spaciousness in ourselves for us to hear the soft whisper of spirit. You know, spirit never speaks loudly. It never sees a need to because it knows that ultimately there's nothing to worry about. But the jumble of thoughts and through that, the perceptions that we believe, that we buy into, that mess that we live in, uh, roughly sixty to 80,000 thoughts a day for most people, you can't hear that soft voice that, that speaks in the silence. And it is my heartfelt wish for you that you come to learn to know that voice within yourself, not the one that babbles all the time, not the one that has an opinion about everything. And I really encourage you to take a look at the video, Om Tat Sat, to understand that you never were the doer of anything to start with. 
We are all, and you know, I think Jim Carrey said it one of the best ways I've ever heard it. We are all simply happenings. Now, we as conscious awareness, we're the, we're the director. We're sitting in the chair. We're watching this play. The problem is, is most of you don't understand that you're the director. You still believe somehow that the I you feel you are is, is undergoing life, is being subjected to life. And, and that's never the case. Life is expressing itself through the conscious awareness you are. And with just a little bit of fine-tuning, with just a little bit of awareness, you can begin to change those thoughts and those perceptions that don't serve you anymore. And I want to give a, a very simple little practice that, that you can do all day long. And it takes no effort at all. And I call this the candle within. And you don't even need to close your eyes. That, that's the beauty of this. And, and you can do this while you're talking to others. You can do this even while you're driving. It doesn't matter. It will take none of your attention away from what you need to focus on. With your eyes open, you can do it with me right now. I, I want you to picture a candle in the heart of your being. A, a single candle there in the darkness. You can make the candle any color you wish, any size and shape you wish. And I want you to imagine a bright flame. And if you look closely, you can see that the flame is casting a 360 degree glowing ball of light around itself out to a certain distance. And while I'm talking to you right now with my eyes open and focused on the camera, I am also seeing that candle. That candle represents where you truly reside. Keep just a tiny bit of your attention on that candle. And if you can do that all day long, and whenever you feel out of sorts or stressed out or you notice that your thoughts are leading you down a path you don't want to go, give a little bit more conscious attention to that candle. Steady the flame. You see, in the act of observing, this engages not only our egoic mind, but it also engages our higher self at the same time. That's why your higher self is here. It's here for the experience. The more you choose to participate openly, honestly, lovingly within the experience, the, the, the happier you're going to find yourself. So to finish up on thoughts and perceptions, in a real nutshell, don't buy everything you think. Don't buy everything you feel. It's just a question of the day. Our body has this amazing built-in alarm system to let us know when we've strayed off of our path. And that we would call negative feelings. And those negative feelings are a product of too much negative thinking. Let go of those negative thoughts. Find a thought that you can believe in wholeheartedly and use that, even if it's just a single thought, to consciously replace those negative thoughts as you notice them. Do so, and a month from now, you will look back and, and wonder what's gone different in your life. And the truth of it is, the only thing that's changed is your thoughts and your perceptions. Namaste to all. You are loved. I, I love you. You are, are, are part of me, and I am part of you, and we are part of a magnificent whole. And I look forward to talking to you again. A quick reminder, tomorrow we have the uh, Sunday uh, Awakened live talk at 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. And we're going to be addressing the dark night of the soul. The, the soul. It's actually going to be a really exciting talk. I personally spent seven years in the dark night of the soul. So if there's someone who's got some knowledge about what not to do, I'm the guy.
<laughs> Have a wonderful day. We'll talk later.